it's the end of the month and I'm just going through the statistics and I've just realized that I've got several Aprils, several Aprils energy data with varying configurations, which makes a very good comparison. April 2018, we didn't have solar panels at all. April 2019, we had a 3.9 kilowatt array of solar panels. April 2020, we had two arrays, one 3.9 kilowatts and one 2.4 kilowatts. Plus, we've actually got a solar home storage battery installed as well. What stands out is the grid energy used, or the grid energy saved, with the different things that we've installed. So in April 2018, we used 172 units of electricity without any solar panels or batteries or anything, just, you know, normal house. In January 2019, we put our first solar array in. It was a 3.9 kilowatt peak performing array, and it cost us four and a half thousand pounds. That saved us 87 units of electricity because in 2019, we only used 85 units of electricity. In September 2019, we put a second solar array in, another 2.4 kilowatts of solar panels, and that cost us approximately three and a half thousand pounds. Looking at March 2020 data, I think I can estimate that in April 2020, this current month, with the second array of solar panels only, not a storage battery, we've used about 45 units of electricity. That's another saving of 42 units. And finally, with the storage battery, we've got a 4.8 kilowatt hour battery here. We've only used two units of electricity, two kilowatt hours for the entire month of April. That's another saving of 43 units from having the solar battery. Putting those numbers into monetary savings sort of confuses the issue here because it makes it look like adding solar PV panels and or a solar battery doesn't really cost justify, but it's only part of the story. Back in April 2018, I didn't have solar or a battery, but I didn't have an electric car and I didn't heat my hot water through the eddy device, so I wasn't heating my hot water with electricity. I was using heating oil with an oil boiler. My plan all along going electric was to increase my usage of electricity, but then to generate my own electricity to keep control of costs. Looking at the cost savings for the initial solar panel install, we've also got to add in the 115 kilowatt hours of electricity that I saved from using solar energy instead of my heating oil. So that's 115 units at 13 and a half pence, 15 pounds 53 saved. Same for the electric car charging, 145 kilowatt hours at 13 and a half pence, 19 pounds 58. But the cost of diesel and the cost of heating oil might have been higher. I think this highlights that most of the savings that you can achieve are from how you use the electricity that you're generating, not what grid energy you were using previously. Fortunately, we installed our first array of solar panels just before the UK FIT payments came to an end. So taking into account the seven pence per kilowatt hour, including export and generation, that's a payment of £35.84 for April 2019. So going back, just looking at what grid energy I saved from installing solar panels, you sort of miss most of the story. It's how you use the energy and the savings you make on using electricity instead of something else. That's where the savings really can be more significant. Most of the financial savings that I've seen have all come from installing the first array of solar panels. So why did I install a second array? And what are the benefits of having that increased capacity, that increased energy generation? In my case, it's not as much about the kilowatt hours that you're generating because you're obviously going to get more and it's not about the grid use being less because obviously it is going to be less. You're producing more from your solar panels so you don't need as much from the grid. Those things are taken for granted but what you don't appreciate until you have the panels is that you've got more opportunity to use the free energy. You feel greater independence. You've got a greater freedom to use the appliances. When you haven't quite got enough solar energy, you think about turning on one appliance and then the other, or waiting for enough solar energy before you use something. When you've got more power, when you've got more panels, you feel that freedom and that independence to be able to do what you want when you want to. I can charge the Kona, the Kona Electric, my electric car, charge it a lot faster when I've got more panels providing higher power out, but the hot water comes up to temperature sooner in the morning. I use less heating oil. I'm actually using portable heaters to heat the house as well because I have an excess of electric energy and I'm also ready for an air source heat pump in the future. 
The second array improves usability, flexibility, and the convenience of just using solar energy for all of your needs. It also future-proofs the solution that I have, planning ahead for the future. The home storage battery benefits seem to be the same as the second array of solar panels. It's much more about usability, flexibility and convenience than it is about cost saving. You get a lot more satisfaction when you're using a lot less grid usage. But also with the home storage battery, in the winter especially, you can obviously use cheap rate electricity overnight and use that during peak periods during the day as well. So there are added benefits, added cost savings as well. But I think the home storage battery is more about the usability and the convenience. If you're thinking about solar panels or a home storage battery, you need to look at the bigger picture. And for me, that is, I'm not using very much grid energy at all, and I like that. But additionally, I'm contributing to the grid. I'm actually giving, exporting energy to the grid. This month alone, we've given out over 500 kilowatt hours of energy from our solar panels out to the grid. Who's benefiting from that? I guess it's the national grid and the national grid shareholders but also our neighbours are using clean green energy. I sort of like that. I'd rather I used it all, um, but it's nice that any that I don't need to use, I can give back out. Exporting 500 kilowatt hours in a month may sound absolutely daft, but you have to remember, we've got the coronavirus situation going on, so we're not using our car. Normally, we'd be driving a car and using 70 pounds worth of diesel with an electric car, I don't have to put any fuel in it whatsoever other than what's coming from my solar panels, so it's completely for free. Right, I need to go and collect some stats for the end of month video, so I'll leave it there. Thanks for watching, and uh, if you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. It does help with the algorithms with YouTube. See you again soon. Thanks again for watching.